Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 14th of January 2019 and the time has just gone 11.01 GMT. It's been a fairly negative start for the markets here in Europe. Uh, essentially, we had disappointing trade figures out of China overnight. And when I say disappointing, the two individual components were disappointing, exports and imports. Uh, and there's continued concerns about this slowing Chinese economy. And there's also um, an argument to be made that the, the trade war between the US and China is actually hurting the Chinese economy. So the two components of the trade are imports and exports. Looking at the import side of things, which re reflects domestic demand in China, imports fell by 7.6%. Um, China is a major importer of natural resources, uh, metals and oil. Uh, so we're seeing pressure being applied to mining companies and also energy companies here, uh, this, this morning in London. Also, um, this ties in with just wider uh, um, weakness in um, Chinese sales. Last week, we saw that uh, um, car sales in China declined on an annual basis for the first time in 20 years. This really shows that the Chinese economy has been slowing down and we're seeing further evidence of that. Now, the Chinese economy has been cooling for some time. This all can't be blamed just on the trade standoff with the US. But speaking of that, exports from China actually declined by 4.4%. So once again, it's an indication that the standoff between Washington DC and Beijing in relation to trade is adding to the, to the pressure on the Chinese economy. And if we have a scenario whereby China has been already been cooling for a number of years, which it has been, now the trade standoff is likely to make things worse. So traders are, are, risk, are, are a bit, um, are, 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 are a bit um, a negative sentiment in relation to that. Keep in mind last week, we did hear that the US and Chinese delegates ended their trade talks on a positive note. Only some details were announced. We haven't really heard any more uh, additional information in relation to that. But as I said, we, we, we've now seen evidence uh, that domestic demand in China is cooling and also that the ex-Chinese ex exports are falling. Uh, be, uh, because of the, the tariff situation. Uh, what else is going on in Europe this morning? Uh, we have some disappointing Eurozone uh, industrial production figures. Um, on an annual basis, they declined by 3.3%. Last week, we saw uh, disappointing industrial production figures from the big three, uh, Germany, France, and Italy. And if the major economies in the Eurozone are all um, producing uh, poor economic indicators, it really doesn't bode well for the region as a whole and also for the currency. Uh, there's been kind of increased talk that the Eurozone is going through an economic malaise. We're now in 2019, so that means the European Central Bank's QE program has come to an end because it wound up last year. And it really just doesn't look good, whereby... When the stimulus package was in place, Eurozone was doing reasonably well, and we saw encouraging economic indicators, and now we're in a period whereby the stabilizers have been taken off, and we're seeing uh, a decline in certain, certain uh, uh, economic reports out of the region. Um, taking a look at some of the major markets now, I'll start off with the FTSE 100. So the FTSE 100 is still well up on the year 2019. Uh, we're well off the lows of late December. But as you can see here, <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see here, the market had a fairly decent bounce back, uh, a, a bounce back from late December up until uh, up until the, uh, last week, where the market couldn't get beyond the 7,000 mark. It's a big psychological number. And if this trend does continue, uh, we could see the market turn over on itself. We could see heading back down towards the 6,750 region. And if you go below that, we could be looking, heading down towards the December low of 6,536. Notice how since August, the market's been in a classic example of a downward trend. A nice series of lower lows and lower highs. And we'll see how things, have to, we'll see how things play out. But this 7,000 mark here could be the next lower high before we potentially look to move lower again. Taking a look at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, we can see that as the market's been edging lower, positive momentum is falling. So the, 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 the upward momentum is cooling and that confirms the downward move we're seeing in the actual market itself. So while we remain below 7,000 
on the FTSE 100, it's likely we could see further losses. If you do manage to take out 7,000 uh, on the FTSE, keep an eye out for this region here, 7,220. It did act, uh, that region did act, did manage to act as both support and or resistance um, yeah, in, in, at the back, in, the, in the back end of 2018. And if, it was, if the metric was important in the past, it makes it more likely that will be important in the future. I take a look now at the German market, the DAX. It's a fairly similar situation there, whereby we're well off the lows of December, but the market did manage to run out of steam. As we can see here, late December onwards, the market had a bounce back, but then again, we had, the market did lose a considerable, a considerable amount of ground. Uh, for the back for the back half of 2018 we can see here the market headed towards the 11,000 mark once again a big psychological number and we can see here in both October and also November just north of 11,000 did manage to act as support so this region now may be acting as resistance to kind of 11,000 mark there thereabouts the market didn't quite get there it's been turning over on itself we can see a tapering off in positive momentum so we could see Further, we could see the market turn over on itself yet again. And if you do look to press on lower from here, we could be looking at heading back down towards the 10,400 region or perhaps down as low as the December low of 10,277. If you do manage to have a break above 11,000, keep an eye for this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 11,080. We can see that the market just was, was a when it rallied in early December, it was just shy of it. It did manage to act as resistance on a number of occasions in uh, in September. So that metric, uh, it has, seeing as it acted as resistance in the past, it may do so again in the future. If you do let the press beyond that, we really would need to be taking out this region here in around the 11,690 area before, before we could become more confident um, that, that the DAX is kind of shaking off the negative trend it's been in for some time. I'll take a look now what's going on on the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 has had a fairly decent uh, um, bounce back since late December. This is the, uh, the move here we've seen since late December. But similar to its European counterparts, uh, recent sessions that the market has been running out of steam. It couldn't break beyond the 2,600 mark. Uh, once again, a big psychological number and an area which did manage to act as support um, in, in October and also in December. So adding more weight to the argument that the 10, 000, sorry, 2,600 mark uh, is, a, is an important level for the S&P 500. If you do manage to drift lower up a bit uh, again, we could see support come into play at 2,000. 532 or perhaps at 2500 itself and if you go south of that we could be looking heading down towards 2438 this region here and if you go below that that would be a likely indicator that we could be heading back down towards the December low of 2319. On the flip side if you do manage your break north of 2600 keep on out for this trend line here. This is acted as support on a number of occasions on the back end of last year. It may act as resistance uh, should we break north of 2,600. And this line here would come into play in around, potentially come into play in around the 2,670 region. And if you go beyond that, keep an eye out for the 200 moving average, this red line here, which comes into play at 2,743. I take a look now at the gold market. So gold's broadly been moving higher since mid-August, but it's really been since mid-November has the, uh, the kind of more aggressive move to the upside been in play. We can see here that the metal ran out of steam um, on a few occasions as it approached the 1300 mark. So obviously it's a big psychological number. If we can manage to break north of 1300, the next area to keep an eye for will be 1,326, this area here. Um, but if the market does manage to kind of turn over on itself and drift a bit lower, we could see support come into play in around the 1,275 area or perhaps in at the 1,265 region. 
and if you go by below that we could be looking at heading back down towards 1250 uh, it acted as both support and resistance recently and also coincides with the 5th day moving average I take a look at what's going on in the oil market now taking a look at Brent crude as I said there was concerns over the the, 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 the imports component of the, of the China trade figures so the concerns over uh, how much oil will China want in the near uh, going forward so we have seen a bit of a pullback in the price of oil but oil is still well up um, on 2019 so we can see in recent sessions the oil has struggled to get beyond this bl this blue line here the fifth of the moving average at $60 and 96 cents uh, if you do manage to kind of break beyond that we could be looking at targeting the late November high of 63 spot 35 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at heading up towards 68 spot 36 this region here but we can't really ignore the wider downward trend that oil has been in since early October and if you do manage to kind of push on lower from here we could be looking heading back down towards 57.50 and a break below that we could be looking heading back down towards $52 and if you go below 52 we could be looking at retesting the 50 bucks level back down here it's a similar situation for WTI whereby it's had a good bounce since December but it has managed to give back some of its gains in recent sessions so as you can see here a very similar situation here once again this blue line here the 50 day moving average which comes into play at 52 spot 01 is acting resistance for the time being if the market can manage to get above that we could be looking at, her, at taking out uh, the mid to, mid to late November highs of 54 spot 14 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at targeting 58 spot 10 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at heading back up towards $60 per barrel but as I said it's been a classic example of a downward trend since early October and if the wider trend continues we could be looking at heading back down towards $47 and below $47 we could be looking at heading to $44 spot 20 and below that we could be looking at heading back down towards the 42 region or the 41 spot 74 area take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar so since mid-november we've broadly seen the euro dollar push higher it hasn't really managed to make a whole lot of ground to the upside but we're well off lows of mid of mid december of mid november and we have seen a nice series of lower high sorry apologies higher lows rather apologies higher lows so the market is creeping higher we did manage to break above the 115 115 115 10 area last week but uh, we are back below it again uh, that area did was was of a fairly significant importance uh, from say through, through May to through October and also in the yeah, to May through October so that area is an important one to keep an eye out for if you stay south of the 11510 region we could we could see the uh, we could see pressure remain on the single currency but keep in mind uh, we have seen higher highs and higher lows um, in recent weeks on the euro dollar so the trend may be slowly beginning to change and if you can take out 115 115 10 again we could be looking at targeting the 116 area or up to the 230 moving average this red line here which comes to play in at one spot 1630 but like i was saying if the market um, remains back below continues to remain below 115 115 10 we could be looking at heading down towards 114 or perhaps even down to 113 take a look at the pound versus the US dollar if you take a look at if you ignore the, um, the, the this this particular candle here uh, where uh, starting sold off heavily that was the night we, we saw a major move in the Japanese yen uh, coinciding with an Apple warned on first quarter sales in relation to slowing sales in China we can see that the pound has been making decent ground against the US dollar in recent weeks it's been slowly pushing higher 
we can see a steady increase in positive momentum. So the increase in momentum confirms the upward move that we're seeing in the, on, in the underlying currency itself. If you look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up back up towards the 130 region. Um, but keep in mind, if you look at the way bigger picture since, since April um, or, the, or even since September, pound dollar has been in a fairly um, clear downward trend. And if you do look to press on lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards the 121 one spot 2710 region or perhaps down towards the um, the one spot 27 region itself. And a move below that will, will, might bring us back down towards the late November low, um, this region here, 125, 124, 76, this area here. If you do look to continue beyond 130, uh, we could be looking at, at, at targeting the late November high of 1 spot 31.74. I'll take a quick look now at the week ahead. And the week ahead article can be found on our website at cmcmarkets.com under news and analysis. You can see it here. Um, looking at covering the corporate and economic highlights of the week. So between today, Monday and Wednesday, we have a number of US banks reporting their quarterly, their fourth quarter figures. Uh, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Uh, we've already had the Chinese fi trade figures out. So on Wednesday, uh, we're, we're going to have Chinese retail sales figures coming out. Keep in mind, this will be a good barometer of what demand, true demand actually in China is like. Tomorrow and Tuesday, um, British politicians vote on Theresa May's deal, it's widely expected to get voted down. So we could see some uncertainty and some volatility in the pound on the back of that. On Wednesday, we have UK inflation. On on uh, apologies, also Wednesday, we have US retail sales. Uh, Thursday, U eurozone inflation. For Friday, uh, we have both UK retail sales and also Canadian inflation. If you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.